Okay, so today we're talking about solving separable differential equations with initial conditions. So it's a long title. Um, if you see this right here, dy over dx equals xy over 2, that is a differential equation. Okay? There's a derivative here, y, and it equals some expression including x and y. So we've got a, an equation with a derivative in it. It's a differential equation. Now, a separable differential equation, and most of the ones that we're going to be dealing with here in, in AP Calculus are going to be separable. Separable means that they can be separated in the equation where x, all the x stuff is on one side and all the y stuff is on another. So if we take a look at this right here, and we actually see that, you know what, this is just some x function times some y function. Those are pretty easy to separate. And then we just have this factor of one half here, right? And even though this is, uh, we treat this as one unit in, in um, calculus, that this is the, the Leibniz notation for derivative, in a sense, when we did integration, we treated it somewhat as a ratio. And we could actually manipulate the dy over dx in such a way like we do with fractions, right? We can kind of multiply both sides, move that this uh, differential of x around. So that's what we're going to do. So what we want to do is we want to get all the x stuff on one side and all the y stuff on the other. And this equation then, if I do that, I'm going to multiply this up there, to get this over there, and I'm going to get uh, y, right, and put y down here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by d of x, and I'm going to divide both sides by y, and this is what we're going to get. We're going to get dy, right, um, equals, and we're going to have xy over 2, but we're going to divide both sides by x. So we're going to have 1 over y on this side, right, when the y comes down there, and we're going to have x dx. And the other thing is this one half um, is going to hang out here, right? So now you might want to, you might not want to deal with a, uh, a fraction. It doesn't really matter where you put it, if it's here or if it's a two over here, right? It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, I kind of like dealing with uh, with whole numbers, but I think we're going to see here that this is going to work out just fine too. So now what we have is we have all the y stuff on one side and all the x stuff on the other, right? And this kind of looks like an integral, right? We have 1 over y times the differential of y. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative, I'm sorry, take the integral, because these are the derivatives, take the integral of both sides. So it's going to kind of look like this. I'll get rid of these red boxes here. We're going to have the integral here on both sides. Now this looks more like it, right? This is this is good stuff. So at this point, right, um, this one half I guess could come out. It's just one one half x. So we could bring that out, uh, or you could leave it in. There. I don't really care. Uh, what's the integral of one over y dy? That's going to be what? Natural logarithm of y, right? Absolute value of y. And so that integral and the dy are going to be gone. What's the integral of 1 half x? Well, we're going to change this 1 to a 2, right? And then we're going to go 1 over, so 1 over 4. 1 over 4 x and the integral and the dx are going to go. Okay? Now, there's one thing that we haven't done yet. When we integrate, and it's not a definite integral, what are we missing here? Plus c. Okay, let me talk about plus c for a second. If we um, integrate over here, and it's an indefinite integral, which this is, there's no limits of integration here, we would have like a plus c really over here, technically. Right? And on this side too, when we did that, we would have a plus c over here as well. So what we're going to do in this situation is instead of having two separate constants, because in the end, like when we when this all boils down, we're we're only interested in really what the combination of these two constants would be. They're they're like terms. So instead of having constants on both sides, we roll these together to just have a constant on one side. Okay. So it's like whatever this constant is, 
I would subtract it from both sides to bring it and combine it with the other constant. So that's why you're going to see in all of your examples and online and stuff like that, we have one C on one side. It's like the super C. Okay? It's a combined constant. Okay. Now, the thing is, all right, um, here's the thing. Uh, we, we are given initial conditions. So guess what? This C is going to actually be a value. We have to figure it out. Okay? We have to figure out what that is. So that's the first step. Now we've solved for C. So at this point, before we isolate for anything, before we do any manipulation of the sides, let's, let's find out what C is right away. And we solve for C okay, by understanding that X is 1 and Y is 1. Okay, x equals 1 and y equals 1. So we substitute into the equation and we solve for c. Okay. So this is going to become, I'm going to change letters here. So natural logarithm of what? 1 equals 1 quarter times 1 squared plus c. So what's the natural logarithm of 1? e to the power of what gives us 1? Yes, 0. This is zero here. And of course, this is just one quarter plus c. So c equals negative one quarter. So, with these initial conditions, then we have uh, uh, really we have this we have ln of y. Okay? And if we're talking about absolute value of y, y could be positive or negative, but if you look at the initial conditions, y is positive, so we can just leave that as positive y. Um, it's not like it's a negative version, so we can just put positive y because y is positive over here. See that? That's This absolute value is a little tricky, but you can just write this ln of y uh, equals, and let's go back to up here, so 1 quarter x squared minus 1 quarter. Got it? So this is now our... Um, our equation now with the C in there. Now in order to find Y equals F of X, okay, so we're trying to find find the particular solution Y equals, right? Okay, so now I have to solve for Y. So I have to solve for Y, so I gotta get Y by itself, right? So if we try and get rid of the natural logarithm part, what's the inverse of natural logarithm? Well, it's E to the power of, right? So if you think about it, this is natural log base e, and as an exponential, it's e to this power equals y. Okay. Now, if you want, I would try and I would maybe simplify this because it's going to line up with what the back of the book says. So let's just simplify this by taking the one quarter out. Right. Uh, it looks like that. Or you could actually write it um, instead of one quarter times, it could be all this over four. Which, which I believe is what the uh, answer key is going to suggest here, right? All right, so we're almost done. Now I'm going to take the e to the power of this equals y. So let's do that. e to the x squared minus 1 over 4 is equal to y. And here is your equation. Okay, that's y equals f of x. That is the particular solution to this differential equation right here, taking into account the initial conditions of x and y values. Okay? Questions? Okay, so here's our second example then. Uh, you're given the differential equation here, uh, dy over dx equals x over y. So again, the derivative of y is given as this ex general expression right here. That's what the derivative equals when it's all, when we take the original equation and we differentiate it, <coughs> excuse me, this is what we get. So we need to find what that original equation is. So we're going to try and integrate, right? But we need to separate the, func the uh, variables and integrate. And of course, we've got some given conditions right here. And this means, of course, that x equals 0 and y equals 1. All right? So let's, uh, let's check this out. This is just x divided by y. So x is sort of compartmentalized here, and so is y. So they're separable, OK? Um, if you had a really complicated function, like you know x cubed y squared minus square root of x y you know, cubed and all this sort of stuff, it, it, 
maybe it's not as easy to separate, right? But if you've got something pretty simple and straightforward like this, we can rearrange this really easily. This is going to be y dy equals x dx, right? So pretty easy. And we're going to integrate both sides. So that's good that we already have this, this uh, differential y here. We have this differential x here. So this is totally going to make sense, right? And we differentiate now, or sorry, we integrate both sides. And so what's this going to be? This is going to be 1 half y squared. And this over here is going to be 1 half x squared. And of course, we're going to have some kind of super constant here, right? That's the, the combination of both of the constants from this, these uh, integrals here. So you guys good with me? Now, I, I do want to caution you on one thing, and it's called, uh, it's called the late C, okay? Beware of the late C. It's bad, okay? Bad, bad, bad. And what that means is some students get to this point and they say, hey, okay, I want to solve for y, so I'm going to get rid of this, I'm going to get rid of this, I'm going to get y all by itself, and have, you know, all this stuff over here, and then the c over here, and then I'm going to put x equals 0 and y equals 1, and then solve for c. That's called the late c. You, you, can't, you can't do that because what you've done is you've changed a whole bunch of things here, and, and this c is not... That you're not going to get the right C. Okay, you have to substitute these values in right after you integrate, just so you don't uh, mess up. Okay, so right away before you isolate for Y and do any algebra manipulations, before you combine these two here, let's just put the initial conditions in here and solve for C. Okay, so we plug in our values and we get C equals one half. So now our differential equation reads this: one half Y squared equals one-half x squared plus one-half, right? So if we divide a one-half from everything, we got one-halves all over the place, I guess. And so if we get rid of all those, we're going to have y squared equals x squared plus one. And to get y by itself, we're going to take the square root. And when we do that, really, we ought to think about this as plus or minus the square root, x squared plus one. And then the question becomes, okay, so here's our differential. There's our equation of the original function. That's great, but it's not a function, is it? This is, uh, this is sort of a sideways parabola, right? Two parts. The positive part up here and the negative part down here. So that's what, that's what this is. And so which, which one do we use? Again, that's where you kind of go back and you say, what are my initial conditions? When f is 0, y is positive. 1. Okay, so if y is going to be positive, we can't have the negative 1 here. So it's just y equals positive x squared plus 1. Okay, so this one, it's positive here because y is positive in our initial condition. So that means we're not going to use this part, just this one. Alright, and basically there you go. That's your... Um, um, that's your original y function. That's f of x given this, f prime of x. Because remember, this is f prime of x. Right? The derivative. Questions? Okay, so here's one you can try on your own. Um, given the differential, uh, the derivative of y with respect to x is x plus 1 over y. Find the original function, y equals f of x, given these initial conditions right here, that f of 0 equals negative 2. Okay, so go ahead and take a minute to do that one on your own right now. If you're watching the video, you can pause it, and we'll show you the solution in a second. All right, so here's the, uh, here's the solution. Uh, 1 half y squared equals 1 half x squared plus x plus c. You're going to plug in x equals 0 and y equals negative 2 into this expression right away to solve for c. Once you do that, you see that c is 2. And so that 2 goes back into here. Solve for y. Taking the square root of both sides here, we have to ask ourselves, do I want the positive or the negative version of this, right? And if you look at the initial conditions, y value is negative. So y is negative here. 
So we're going to use the negative uh, version here, and this should be your answer. And you guys got that, right? 